Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back once again to the land sandbox mode. In today's episode, we're going to be building something I've already built, which does sound a little bit odd to begin with. On Friday, a lot of people on Twitter now know this, I built something whilst quite heavily under the influence of alcohol. I literally forgot that I built it until Sunday and then found out, oh look, there's something in the garage bay, what is this? And it's actually a pretty good idea. It's a land skimmer, I think. Now, this is a very poorly designed one, as you might imagine, but it does work. The basic premise is that it uses rotor blades and a few thrusters to propel the craft over the ground, and then it uses rubber to prevent any damage being done to the craft as it does so. Is it optimal? No. Is it fun? Yes. Let's go on to fleet move and just do that. It even has a working sail, and yes, this is a true sail, it has the sail AI and everything, and it actually works out pretty well. The problem is it sways far too much because nothing has been balanced. At all. Apparently all of my builds have to jiggle, it's just that's how things work apparently. So yeah, pretty cool concept, I love the idea of it. It's only ever going to work on very, very flat terrain, but... It's something different, and I like that. I like the idea of it being something different, something I've not really done before, and so we're going to be building one from scratch today that's a little bit better. And we are going to be using missiles, most likely, just because I want to use missiles. And now, actually, what I'd like to see, continuing that sort of path, I would like to see what happens when you go over the really rough terrain, because we're going to have to figure out some way to deal with this. The most logical way, I would think, would just to have the rubber in a sort of sled style on the front, so it goes up a little bit. That way, there's no chance of the wood, like that, hitting any of the different parts of, of the terrain. This would also, of course, have to go for the back and anything else. So, a lot more of the rubber blocks. Ugh. Yeah, it doesn't do with this at all. Also, an internal rotor blade to keep it securely on the floor, and then perhaps some aerial AI, which sounds a little bit weird, for additional pitch controls, just so we have different options. If we do all of that, and we keep the cost down by using missiles rather than advanced cannons and stuff, I think we could have a really quick, really silly distraction unit, similar to the bikes. Are you going to- actually, we, we, we could also make it amphibious, it wouldn't be difficult. However, I think it may have just destroyed itself. Yep, drunk engineering at its best. There it goes, it's now a flyer because it doesn't want to prove a concept. Come on, there we go. Now, of course, the wood itself is already buoyant, and if we had the rotor blades set up so it detects the ground level and the water level, we could make it go across water as easily as it goes across land. But I think that's getting ahead of myself. If this ever does go into the land campaign, it's for the land campaign, which is land. So, let's just build a very, very basic outline then. And yes, we will be building out of wood once again. So the first question I've got is how big should this be? In my head, I've got a general idea for the looks of this vehicle, and it's going to be a major body section in the centre, and then two sort of skis going either side, a large rotor blade on the back, which is also outside the vehicle, like the drunken build, because I just like how that looks, and then we have the missiles sort of here-ish in the centre, both facing outside, and then using eject in order to throw them a little bit upwards. I think that's the idea, because I think that would look really cool as it speeds towards the target, and also, this type of vehicle would make an excellent capturing vehicle. We could have a version with no weapons and just pure manual controls. It would not be difficult in the slightest. Okay, let's start making that build a reality then. Also, this engine type, no. Okay, I think this one is a little bit too small. The idea is, though, this will be the capturing version, so perhaps we're going to build more than one vehicle today. I'm not really too sure. It depends on how long this takes to actually complete, but the basic idea is everything's exposed, it's going to die in one shot, very similar to the bike, and it's going to have no weapons. It's going to be quick-ish and very easy to manually control. It's the capturing vehicle. I mean, we could add some very basic weaponry, 
but I think this will be just a dedicated, silly, flying around sort of build. It also kind of looks like a deformed creation between a mouse and an insect, which is different. There we go, the opposite of trying to make it flip, it will essentially try to make it balance, and no damage because of the rubber tiring here, which really needs to look better, because right now I just do not like the look of this thing. I mean, it's interesting, to say the least, but it doesn't really have the aesthetic I was going for. It's also very cheap, it's like 500 at the moment. At this point, I would like to mention, if anyone does want to do this in their own game, just use the wheels. The wheels currently, if I'm correct, also don't take any collision damage, so there isn't any real reason to use the rubber blocks over the wheels, other than just a bit of a challenge, and for the style of the actual vehicle. Okay, that is decently quick, actually. As a basic premise, yep, it's working just fine. Now, where are the hills? Because I want to test out with the hills using the front rubber sections. And, of course, these need to go out a little bit further. Because right now, this will still ram into things and this will be a little bit behind it. Also, I need to add some turning thrust, which I think I'm just going to do with some basic thrusters. Two at the back and two at the front should be okay. Okay, yep, yeah, that's working exactly as intended. Right now, the rotor blades simply are basically off. That's why we're not actually moving. Allow me to demonstrate. And the correct way, and there we go. Definitely skids quite a lot, but definitely getting to the place you want to go. So now if I assume manual control, let's do a turn. There we go, I'm overriding it completely. I can also bring it to a stop, like so. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Although the stop is almost instantly overridden as soon as I let go of the control, so maybe I will make it a little bit more harsh, but the basic premise is working. It's quick, incredibly cheap, and looks stupid. I mean, what more could you want? Now, where are all those hills? Go over there. You got very confused by that command then, didn't you? Everything we have is going to rock. Well, I suppose it's more of a sway, really, than a rock, but still. I do not feel safe here. Oh look, the thing everyone's going to aim at. Oh look, me! That's going to be just fine. Oh, I didn't know that actually turned. That's cool. Very minor problem, I've just realised, is that the rotor blades weren't in line with the centre of mass. They were originally, but then as we've changed things, the centre of mass has also changed. You need to be very careful with stuff like that, so... That's a lot worse, though, for positioning. I will have to move the exhausts either a little bit up or a little bit below, and then these jets will have to be far further out, or moved forwards, because I still want them at the back, in line with mass as well. The only problem that could have caused is if we ever did bounce too much on the front, that could cause us to tip forwards and then we would be stuck forwards. And since I don't really want to add a PID system to this because I just don't think it's worth the resources, adding all the extra thrusters and such to balance it out if it does tip, that would basically lead to the end of this craft. It would just be stuck the end. I guess I could... Ooh, there's the other thing as well. I don't want this rotor blade to be so low. Hmm. In the next version of this, the actual proper version, because this is still a test little capturing version, I need to make the rubber bottom far lower. Or the centre of mass far higher, because this will lead to problems as we go above hills and such. Of course, what I could have done is just turn off the AI altogether. That probably would have been the better option, come to think of it. But still, here we go. Uh, just, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we are going above the hill. So far, no damage taken. A little bit of air there. 
This looks really weird because it just looks like the center is staying perfectly still and the terrain is moving. And there we go, the flip I was talking about. So, how would we fix this? What would be the best way to fix this craft? Also, I forgot to add it so it stops when you turn off the AI. That's something else I need to do. Well, an obvious answer is a very basic PID system. Just the most basic you could have. Having a thruster at the back, thruster at the front, both of which are facing down, which can cause you to flip the correct way if you're stuck in a position like this. That's the more obvious answer. But I don't like it. Are we ever going to be going over terrain this bad, is the question. In the finished version, which we're about to do, the weaponized version, I will say yes. I will say sometimes there is going to be battles in terrain like this. With the capturing vehicle, no. I can't see us doing that. We also still push us a little bit down with the forward thrust, which is a little bit annoying. It does deal with it quite well, though. All in all, it's doing better than I expected. Just that last little bit then was a bit disappointing. But yeah, no damage being taken, and it's off and going to the next area. So, I think we can call this little test vehicle, which I will be using as ramshackle as it looks, done. It's a capturing vehicle. Simple as that. It's super cheap. I simply get in it and then go towards the enemy whilst the battle is raging. I then jump off and capture the vehicle. And for the most part, it works just fine. Purposefully going for some of the more sharp jumps there. Also, the downwards, there we go. The downwards rotor placement is also a problem. If we have that slightly more back, that would help. Because right now, as you can see, it is just ahead of the center of mass, which means it is pushing the front down more than the back. Well, I think those are problems we will solve when we build the next vehicle. For now, I will call this finish. Let's just call it capture, or cap for short. There we are. Cap. And then let's build ourselves a proper version with weapons and everything. And just to clarify how this works, if you want the rotor blind to stop when it isn't having a command, all you need to do is swap it from continuous to instant spin. Simple as that. So let's move us forwards, and then off, and there you go, it's completely off, we're not constantly being thrown forwards. And then these rotor blades are being controlled via a control block using the complex controller here, G and I, which then corresponds to numbers, and then you have control blocks using the control, and then those numbers. It's a little bit weird to try and explain, but then when you get the idea, it's really, really simple. You can just make AI, which don't normally control things, control things considerably well. Okay, so you can go away again. And let's build ourselves a finished product. Here's an idea. What if we had the blades on the inside of the craft and had them sort of exposed to the elements in such a way that you could see the blades spinning from the outside? I think that would look really, really cool, depending on how you do it. However... I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. So for now, I will leave this as it is until I've decided how I'm going to build the rest of the craft because depending on how I build the rest of the craft depends on how all of this connects up. So consider this a bit of a non-permanent version. The rubber blocks look so naturally bad. Having no ability to use any corners or anything with them just makes them very, very difficult to work with. And honestly, I'm not liking how this is shaping up, so expect some complete reworks in a few moments. Time for a really basic test. So right now we have a PID system which has been set up to be very, very aggressive with all of these set to minimum except for the KP gain and we have the same for roll. This means that the craft will, as soon as it sees any deviation in the settings, will instantly try to correct it but it won't take into account how much it's going to really overcorrect itself. If this was on an airship, it would be causing it to violently rock left and right and, well, causing it to pitch as well quite drastically. Even though it would keep it stable in the air, it would look absolutely horrendous, and it can cause some stability issues as you take damage. On a craft like this, what I'm hoping is that because it's so violent, it will force the craft to always try to stay on the ground. That's the idea. 
Let's test it out on some really nasty terrain. Currently going at only 35 meters per second, so we can't really say for certain even if this works it will work on the fastest design I can make, which I'm hoping will be far quicker than what we have currently by the end of this design. But as long as it works I am very happy. Yep, there we are, the pitch keeps on correcting itself so it doesn't ram into everything. The roll's doing a good job as well. Causing it to sort of stick to the sides. A bit of damage there. Okay, so one thing I've noticed is that when the wood here takes damage, some of that damage sometimes seemingly gets transferred into the rubber. I'm not sure if it is actually being transferred in this way. I don't know how kinetic damage via impact actually works in this game, honestly. It could just be that the rubber being let go of, but either way, it does kind of hint that we need the rubber to be further out than the wooden section on top. And this will get stuck. Okay, and that's just, of course, because of the design. Nothing to do with the PID. It's just... There we go. A little bit too long for that gap. Okay, handling airtime decently. Could have been better. Could have been better, but it did stick to the ground. I would say this is what we are going to use on the finished design. And yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how I actually want this to look. I've changed it like four times now. Can we get to the other side? Come on, I believe in you. You can do it. And airtime? Handling it well. Okay, yes it can. So, it handled everything over there except for the fact it beached itself because the vehicle is kind of a weird shape right now. So, I'll be right back once things look a little bit more finished. Way too long later, and I'm still not happy with how this thing looks. I have remade it now at least 10 different times, including building it from scratch twice. And I am just not having a good day in terms of style, but I am getting there, and I've decided on a few things. We are going to be a little bit more heavily armoured than I originally intended. This is going to be a craft which deals with very early tier opponents, but actually survives the battle, unlike some of the other craft we've been building recently, like the bikes and the turrets, this thing should be able to survive some fighting. So because of that, we are most likely going to be going down the route of at least one advanced cannon, probably something similar to this. Now these have been stolen directly from the drop turrets we made last time, but they are actually really good against very small enemies, so it's pretty perfect for a craft like this. Just having one on the top here, and then having missiles down the side, perhaps on some kind of missile pod, that way we can really easily deal with very early game aggression, but it will be phased out, and that's the whole point. I want, if we do another campaign, I want a lot of building. I'm in the building mood at the moment, I want to keep on building new craft, getting better at building, and the problem is sometimes when you build too much with a purpose, you end up building a craft where you never really need to change. Similar to the last Ashes of the Empire campaign, that happened when we built the Bloodletter, the small hovercraft with the dual essentially miniguns, which would break through pretty much anything. There wasn't any incentive for me to build anymore because I'd built a bit too meta. So I want to avoid that as much as possible. If I do build, I want it to have a single purpose. When that purpose is no longer available to us, we simply move on and build something new. Heavier tanks, having vehicles holding other vehicles. I've had a lot of thought about this because a lot of people have been saying about a new Ashes of the Empire campaign, and I'm still a bit on the fence. I really want to do it, I don't want it to be saying me, we can't simply just go back and finish off the last one because it's a bit glitchy at the moment because of how old my save file is. Yeah, bit of a long waffle then. Back to building, I'm thinking about removing these two sides completely and starting those afresh, but I am actually quite happy with how the centre is looking now. So yeah, continuing on. I really don't understand why people always say I get distracted far too easily, but on a side note, I've now made this turret hover. And even if you drop it from the sky, it will land briefly and then start to hover. That's good. Good time usage. It floats. 
Okay, going at 42 meters per second, less than 5,000 resources. We have two missile pods. The basic AI is now sorted completely. The internal armor is actually quite impressive for the size. I really think this will survive quite a bit of combat before dying, which is good for its low cost. And all we need to do is sort out the front, add maybe one more weapon, which I think will be a small advanced cannon, and then we're pretty much done. The only concern I have is because this section here is too far forward, if there's anything like a hill, there's a good chance we're just going to ram it, so that won't be the best. Still, it works, and that's always good. No, I didn't end up blowing this thing up by mistake when making a new turret. That would be stupid. A little bit later, and I think I'm now close to the final design. I really like the idea of separating the skis or sleds or whatever you want to call these sections into two, and then focusing solely on missiles. It's been a very long time since we've had a pure missile craft, and now they are not exactly as meta as they used to be. I am much happier focusing craft purely on the most fun type of weapon in the game, in my opinion, the humble missile. So the the front needs to be finished off and a little bit more detail on the side. But yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with this, honestly. In terms of stability, it's incredibly good. And in terms of cost, it's only just over 5,000 resources, with a little bit extra being hidden in the ammo makers, since this thing can't support all of these missile launchers without them, or simply adding more ammo barrels, making it even more explosive. The volume is also just over 1,000, making it still relatively small. So it's small and cheap. It's there for a simple, very powerful, Powerful alpha strike and then to slowly whittle away enemies at least that's the idea it's also fairly quick going at 50 meters per second and turning relatively quickly so it's a fast responder strike craft I'm okay with that honestly I'm very okay with that I actually stand corrected our craft is under 1000 volume so it's absolutely tiny let's see what's a good enemy to face off against then how about the Sand Rider? If I recall, the Sand Rider has quite a few weapons, but it's a little bit on the frail-ish side. It definitely wasn't around the last time I did the campaign, but I have seen it since then. The King Cobra is a bit too big. Simple as that. It's 2,100 volume, and its cost is over 14,000, making it far too expensive and far too, uh, well, simply big to face off against this fairly. So, yeah, let's go with the Sand Rider. And before people ask, sadly, the craft have not yet been ordered in difficulty, so everything counts as easy. It would be a little bit easier for these tests if they were, you know, a little bit more regulated. Spawning the Sand Raider, let's pause time. Oh, or not. Okay, both are going straight into combat mode. Wow, the Sand Raider really lagged out there. Well, Sand Raider died, and we're skimming off to victory. Our craft tries to stay around about 500 to 600 meters away from the enemy and doesn't let the enemy get closer than 300. Well, the missile system is definitely working, but yeah, not exactly fair. Let's, um, let's do that again. Let's spawn us over here looking at the enemy. Let's pause time, turn off our AI. Spawn in the Sand Raider. Okay, good. Now we're actually facing off against each other. Let's turn that off as well. That was a very weird delay from the enemy. It simply stood there. Yeah, look at that. That is a lot of firepower. I wonder how big these side turrets are. They seem pretty packed in together. Okay, then you must go straight to the side. Yep, you do. Okay, I understand how they've been built. Very cool idea. So you are 14,000, so even you are much more expensive than this little thing. Okay. It's weird when I'm the one building small. Um... It sort of just stopped the enemy? And now we're backing off, as we should do. Oh, it destroyed its AI, okay. So, yep, the initial burst from the missile is definitely good enough to kill some of the more frail targets and some of the more medium-sized opponents, and then it will just simply run away and shoot missiles and then get back into the battle. I think I have set it so it doesn't... 
I don't know. I just think it goes a little bit too far away from the target. It's definitely not an issue of turning, because as you can see, it can turn just fine, but that really, really runs away. Perhaps lowering its minimum distance by maybe 200 meters might be a little bit better. Although it does really want to, to simply face the opponent, because that's basically the idea I'm going with. It goes directly towards the target, fires all of its missiles, gets too close, runs away, then turns back around, fires the second volley, and so on and so forth. I've set it so its broadside angle is really, really narrow. Yeah, I think it'll work. I just think it needs a lot of fine-tuning and a lot of battle practice. But either way, I'm happy with the missiles. They're all working as intended, despite being so close to each other. The ejectors really help. And for its cost, it can definitely do a lot of damage. If the enemy don't target it, and it's just allowed to keep on attacking, if they target, for instance, one of the heavily armoured tanks instead, this will pump out a lot of damage over the course of the battle. If it's focused on, I think it's going to die very quickly. Well, I'm afraid right now I am all out of time for today's video. I'm fairly happy with this design, but I do have to say that the idea of a skimmer, although fairly fun, is not the best. It really, really isn't. The amount of friction these blocks actually cause, especially cause things like turning to be incredibly difficult. The amount of thrust this needs to turn is way higher than any of the other ground builds, so that's a lot of engine power for very little effect. Also, getting up to higher speeds is a bit more difficult. With such a huge rotor blade and then the additional thrusters at the back, you would expect maybe 70, 80 meters per second from a tank or one of the other wheel craft, but this one is going just, just over 50. So I think it's a cool concept, I just don't think I'll be using it too much in the future, but this one I do actually really like. It's a sort of grudging like for it after having to rebuild it so many times to get it to work as I want it. Either way, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Off camera, I will make the front a lot prettier and finish this craft off, and then it will have a permanent place in our new random builds. So, name suggestions are still welcome. I'm very close to naming the other craft as well. Thank <laughs> you.